Hello and welcome. Suppose I have a function f of x and I want to find the exact rate of change of this function at some point c. So at, at the coordinate c along the x-axis. So at this point on the curve. And the reason why I want to do that is because this might be a curve of say displacement and I want to find the velocity. Well, this could be the curve of say the number of bacteria in a certain experiment and I want to find the rate of growth of the bacteria. So there are many applications in science and engineering as to why I would want to find the exact rate of change at a certain place along the curve. Uh, but how would I go about doing it? Well I could do it by drawing a tangent line that crosses the point and then working out the slope of the tangent line but I have no way of knowing if this is actually the proper tangent line because I'm just guessing I mean I could be drawing it a degree off say for example this could be the tangent line through the point or maybe this could be the tangent line. So at best this approach will only give us a rough estimate of the rate of change at the point C simply because there's a lot of guesswork involved. Let's try a different approach. Let's pick another point on, along the curve. Let's, uh, let's pick another point along the curve and on the x-axis we'll just call it uh, coordinate x because uh, we'll see why in a second. Now if I join a second line joining these two points and I can extend it to if I wanted to. So extend this line on both sides by a little bit. Is this line now a good approximation of the slope at C? And the answer would be no because we picked two points that are too far apart and we can see that the slope of this curve so the delta Y and the delta X is going to be too steep so by inspection this rate of change will be a lot bigger than the actual rate of change at this point. But what if we were to bring this X coordinate closer to C? Let's say we bring it over here and again we draw a second line to join the two points and I might extend it beyond on both directions if I wanted to. Now this line would be much better approximation of the slope at this point than the previous line. So as I move X closer and closer and closer to C the more accurate my estimation is going to get of the slope at C. And if I take X and zoom in really closely and make it infinitely close to C, then what I'll do when I join the two dots is get pretty much the exact rate of change at the point C. And I'll write that as the limit as X approaches C of F of X minus f of c all over x minus c and that's equal to the rate of change of f which I write as df on dx at c. So the derivative of f at c is given by the limit as x approaches c of f of x minus f of c over x minus c. And I can also write that in uh, I guess Lagrangian notation as f prime or f dash of c. So this is defined as the derivative or the rate of change of the curve f at a given point c. 
And I can write this in a generalized form if I substitute h is equal to x minus c. So let's do that. Let's say let h is equal to x minus c. So that would imply then that c is equal to x minus h. And if I was to substitute this into the above expression, I'll get the limit. The limit will change from x to c to h is to 0. So the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x minus the f of x minus h all over h is equal to the derivative of the function df dx at the point x minus h. So note on this diagram this distance or this distance would be h. Okay this is not the way that it's commonly written though. It's more commonly written as the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus the f of x all over h is equal to the differential of f at the point x. So this is the formula for differentiating any function by first principles. If you are currently studying math, please feel free to subscribe to my channel for future videos that may help you on exams or assignments. And as always, please feel free to ask me any question by commenting on any of the videos that you've seen. Thanks for watching and I hope you've learned something.